So today I'm going to be building a PC with a few focuses on gaming, streaming, and high value. So I just want to quick point out that this will not be a build tutorial. There are plenty, plenty of fantastic PC build tutorials on YouTube. This will not be focusing on that. I'll more be going over the part selection that I chose. And then as a first time builder at the end, I'll give a summary of anything that I ran into issues with. But in terms of actually installing everything, it's, it's really simple actually, but there's tons of good tutorials on YouTube. All right, and just a quick note before we go any further, if you could probably tell from the name of my channel, this is actually a RC theme channel. I mainly focus on drones. I build and race them. Here is an example here. So that is the main focus of my channel and what almost every other video on here is about. So I do have a little bit of technology background. I'm very familiar with soldering and electrical connections. So that is gonna help immensely in this build, but everything here is plug and play. But I'm just putting this here since some of you may be first time viewers since this is a different category video than I'm used to posting. So just a heads up and thanks for checking out the video. So let me just touch back on the values I mentioned and in terms of gaming, um, when you're looking for a gaming PC, you definitely do not want to skimp on the GPU as that is the most important in terms of gaming. Um, in terms of streaming, something that is quite important, um, it depends on if you have an NVIDIA or AMD card. Um, if you have an NVIDIA, you can use the uh, NVENC feature to utilize the GPU to stream, but if you're going with an AMD GPU like I have, their equivalent isn't quite as good, so I'm gonna be more relying on the CPU with the H.264 codec, which is why I went with the processor that I did. Speaking of processor, I went with the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. This is an eight core, 16 thread CPU that will be a very, very strong contender all around and now if you are only gaming with a PC going with a Ryzen 5 3600 is more than enough however since I plan to be using this PC and mainly the CPU for um, streaming I did go with the higher core higher end processor so if your focus is only on gaming you can save a hundred or so bucks on the processor and go with the Ryzen 5 and maybe spend it on a higher end GPU you could get the 2070 Super instead of this 5700 XT which I did get the Radeon 5700 XT. Now in terms of value, this is an extremely good GPU. I got this for $380 on eBay, brand new. Um, they are selling on Amazon for about 410 and even at that price, it's still very good. Same price as a 2060 Super. Um, however, if you do want to save 100 bucks or so on the Ryzen 5 CPU, if you're only gonna be gaming and not streaming, you could use that extra 100 to go to a $500 GPU like 2070 Super, and then you could also use the NVENC encoder and stream there. All right, so for the motherboard, I'm gonna be using the Gigabyte B450M. This is a mini ATX board with Wi-Fi built in. Nothing too special here, but a $90 motherboard. If you wanna save a little bit of money, you definitely do not need the inbuilt Wi-Fi. I'm gonna be running Ethernet on this anyways, but I thought it would be nice to have. Nothing fancy about the motherboard. You have the standard AM4 socket for the CPU. You have four DIMM slots. Um, you wanna make sure if you are using an Intel CPU that you get one that fits that socket, obviously. For the RAM, I'm going with the Corsair Vengeance LPX. I got a 16 gigabyte kit, which is two individual sticks at 3600 megahertz, which should definitely help out the Ryzen CPU. I'd say if you're going with a Ryzen, you wanna get at least 3000 megahertz RAM, and 3200 or 3600 will definitely help even more. In terms of storage, I went with the WD Black 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2. Stick here, this thing should be incredibly fast, much faster than a hard drive, and even faster than a typical SSD hooked up via SATA cable. The M.2 slot, which will be utilized with this, will give us very, very quick speeds. And 500 gigabytes should be enough, since this will primarily just be a gaming computer for me, and most of my productivity and workflow will be on my MacBook. And for power supply, I went with the Thermaltake 600 watt. Now, for, in terms of power supply, this is definitely an area you don't want to skip on too much. This guy cost about $70, which I think is right around the sweet spot for power supplies. You can definitely get some for $40. But I, I don't think it's worth going that cheap on one. This is definitely one of the more important components of your PC. And if it blows up, it could break other things. And then you have to buy another one. So I got this 600 watt 80 plus gold model, which should be perfectly adequate for this system. It should be able to run on 500 watts, but we have that little bit of extra headroom. 
Then lastly for our case, we have the Aegis Raid Max, which is a pretty decent case for about $70. Comes with two RGB fans, a glass removable front panel, an RGB control in the back, and a couple other nice features. The case is definitely somewhere where you can skimp on if you are trying to save as much money as possible. I'd say that the CPU, GPU, and the power supply are where you want to spend most of the money as they will make the biggest difference. So that is all of the components for the PC itself, which comes out to right around $1,100, and depending on the tax, could be higher, could be lower, as well as with the current virus, the prices and stock are heavily fluctuating. But I'd consider these parts right around a mid-high-end build. Um, in terms of PCs, from what I've found so far in the research, once again, this is my first build. Um, going to the very low end, below $500, and the high end above $1,500 to $1,600, um, there definitely is diminishing returns. So I think this middle ground is a nice sweet spot on value. Definitely not the cheapest, but it's going to perform really, really well. And then, of course, you are going to need some peripherals, which I did save a little bit of money on. Um, my keyboard, I just got a Red Dragon K552, which is about 50 bucks. For mouse, I got a Razer HyperX Basilisk. Obviously, you should be in a connection cable. I just got this cheap Cat6 cable from Newegg. For a headset, I got the Corsair Void RGB Elite Wireless. And then for monitor, I went with the Scepter C24 which is a 1080p 144 hertz monitor, which is, once again, the goal of this build was to target 144 um, hertz slash FPS in game while streaming at 108060. So hopefully this setup should be able to push out over 200 frames while it is just gaming in Modern Warfare. And then once I stream at 108060, hopefully it will stay above the 144 hertz mark to keep the gameplay as smooth as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this thing. And if I run into any problems, I will let you know. And there we go, the PC is fully built and working. So obviously since this isn't a tutorial guide, I have went ahead and installed everything, set everything up and got everything working. I've actually been using this PC for a couple days now. Just wanted to make sure everything was fully good. You can see I've um, taken control of the RGB fan, set those to green. Um, the CPU cooler is still just um, scrolling through colors. I think I plugged the header in the wrong port, which is why I can't control it, but you can if you want. But overall, the PC building experience coming from a first time builder was extremely simple. Um, actually putting all the parts together was definitely the easiest part on the motherboard. Going forward and installing it into the case was a little bit harder, especially since I'm using a mini ATX board. Um, this case is set up, you can see it's quite a lot of free room. This is a full size ATX tower, so a little bit of a buyer mistake, but it did give me extra room to work with. Um, but by far the hardest thing for me was figuring out the wiring. There are a few obvious things such as the GPU cables and the big CPU cable. But a lot of these smaller wiring coming from the back, especially from the front panel connectors, um, they're individual pins, they can't really show them down here. They are a lot harder to figure out exactly where they go. And now most PC builds kind of skim over this a little bit, so I did have to go and look up individual wiring videos. But once I searched specifically for wiring videos, I found a few that were quite helpful and was able to get everything sorted. One nice thing about this uh, case is the large bottom here for the power supply I actually took out all the extra 
um, adapters for the hard drives or SSD disks since I'm not using them. I'm just using one um, M.2 stick. So I was able to stuff all the extra power supply cables underneath. I'll show you a picture of my wiring in the back. Not the absolute neatest. You know, I still have a couple things here and there. The wires aren't all the same color in um, wire sheaths, but you know, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm much more interested with the performance versus how the PC actually looks if you're looking up close. <laughs> So just a quick note about the performance, as I mentioned earlier, the main purpose for building this is to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare and possibly stream it. Um, I was previously playing on my 16-inch MacBook Pro, which I absolutely love this computer, and it performs by far the best of any of the MacBook laptops so far with an AMD 5500M GPU in there. However, it is still a laptop and it is still a MacBook. So no matter what you're gonna do, it's gonna severely GPU limit and it's gonna severely throttle limit, which is the purpose for building this PC. And playing at the ultimate low settings before, I was getting anywhere from 50 to 80 to 90 FPS. And I put in the same settings just to see what it would on this computer. And I instantly saw between 190 and 230. And then moving to high settings, I'm getting about 160, which is awesome since I'm targeting that 144 hertz uh, monitor refresh rate, which means I'll be able to lock my FPS at about 150 and give about an extra 10% of headroom for the GPU to help keep it cooler. And then the CPU is about 20% during gameplay, which should leave plenty of room for the X264 streaming that I plan to do off of it. Since the AMD um, streaming equivalent inside the GPU is definitely not nearly as good as Nvidia. So yeah, it's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this quick overview of my first gaming PC build as a first time builder. Once again, definitely not as scary as it seems. Just take your time, watch lots of videos, read the manuals, and you should be fine. So yep, there'll be links down in the description below to all these things. Once again, with the virus, uh, stock is very limited. Prices on some things are extremely, uh, extremely being price gouged, like the monitors and certain things such as capture cards or webcams. But if you shop around and you don't mind waiting a couple weeks for something to come into stock or it's shipped to you, you can still do fairly well. So yep, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.